Bones and All, which is another film all four of us were luckily able to catch. Uh, this is Luca Guadagnino's uh, coming-of-age film centered around two cannibals. It stars uh, Taylor Russell, uh, Timothy uh, Shalagot, and uh, Mark Rylance. Um, I-, I need to start with Tyler. Uh, Tyler, you are giving this a five out of five stars on Letterboxd. I absolutely respect the shit out of that. I know you love coming of age films. I think a bit more than than the rest of us here do. Um, but either way, I, I respectfully walked out of that theater and I looked at Victoria and I go, I can't wait to figure out how Tyler gave this a five out of five. <laughs> so I mean, so off. <laughs> yeah, there's no secret sauce or anything behind my rating. So I'm a sucker for coming of age stories. I'm a sucker for romance stories. And this has both of them because this is a cannibal story, like you said. There is true elements of horror. Like, I know the menu is also classified as a horror, but I would say Bones and All, clearly, like, I don't think I'm crazy to say, clearly more of a horror than the menu. Would you it's agree? body yeah. horror, isn't it? So, yeah. So, yeah. And, well, and, like, there was, like, like, at least one scene that got me to jump a little bit, like, whereas the menu didn't really have any jumps. So, Bones and All is billed as a cannibalistic horror, but truly it's a drama, romance, coming-of-age story that I thought was executed super well. I Going into this, like, I would never say I'm – good with body horror good with gore and stuff but i didn't really actually have an issue with this one i, I don't know why like I, it didn't bother me um but i just thought it was executed very well a great romance story that was captivating performances from taylor russell and T- timothy chalamet i thought were both incredible and timothy chalamet just when he needs to do a cry scene he just freaking nails it that's dude that dude's one of the best criers in hollywood right now mm-hmm. and i've said it before i don't love mark rylance and it's funny because Seth actually didn't enjoy him in this movie, but I, I actually take. really, I really enjoyed him in this movie. I, I yeah, sorry, whatever. I, I just think he always plays that same <laughs> character of Don't Look Up and Ready Player One, where he's just like a slow talking old dude. And in this movie, I thought he did deliver a quite quite a good range of acting, and I did really enjoy him in this one. But to me, it was just this is what Twilight would be if it was executed perfectly. But Twilight's shit. Although I do get a little enjoyment out of the first Twilight. I'm not gonna lie. But it's just a romance coming of age story. That's it's a teenage love story at its core. That's elevated by this crazy story. That's unique. It was fresh. It felt like I was seeing something new for the first time in a long time of the 117 movies I've seen this year. And yeah, to, just to me, there's just really not much I could knock it for. Uh, I thought the acting performances were all great. I thought the cinematography was really cool. Um, and just all in all, I just really enjoyed the story in this film. And there was enough underlying tension the entire time to keep me on the edge of my seat. And all the way to the very end, I just I just had a great time with this. I, I was surprised I liked it this much. I did not go into this expecting to like it this much. Um, it was high on my radar just because of Timothy Chalamet, but I, I wasn't really b- dying for this movie to come out. Um, but yeah, I, I not not much negative I can say. I give it a nine point seven out of ten for five out of five. I like that you mentioned Twilight because someone <laughs> someone I saw someone on Twitter basically tweet like. If you go into Bones and All and you pretend they're vampires, you'll have a much better time with this movie. <laughs> Dude, they kind of were. <laughs> we can get into that, but so like, I gotta watch. vampires it. that while they suck blood, they take a bite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They do a lot more than um, that, man. Seth, uh, what were your thoughts on this? I know you gave it a four, four. out of five. Yeah, I think four we all gave it four, except Tyler, didn't we? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this this one for me, I, I think will go up. Uh, in, in, in like time but i think that i mean it embraces the the premise of this like cannibal couple whatever but it is so much more than that like tyler said i think it's like it's it's unhinged but that that actually helps when delivering the metaphor of you know alienation uh, connection you know lo- the need for love stuff like that um i think tim Chalamet was fantastic like tyler said mark rylance's character i actually really like him as an actor i just I didn't see the need for his character personally. I didn't really think he added anything to the narrative that wasn't already said. Um, It looked great, visually very pleasing. I really liked the score. I think thematically it made a lot of sense, but I think it will also benefit from a a rewatch because it is thought-provoking, it is authentic, and it is more than just a film made to kind of shock the audience, you know, like a a terrifier or whatever, something like that. Um, And I think it's it's something that's going to take a lot more thinking for me personally. Um, but yeah, didn't like Mark Rollins' character that much. Didn't really think he added anything. I think it felt like uh, Badlands, which is a Terrence Malick 70s film, which is based on a true story about a couple who basically do things and, and they all come from different backgrounds. It felt a lot like that. 
I think it worked really, really well. Um, I think, yeah, thematically, it did a lot better than, than I maybe expected it to. Just because I haven't actually seen... I, I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Is it Guad... How do you pronounce his last name? I George did well. Good I think job, that's really. it, yeah. yeah I, think that's I, it. I assume the second G is silent. I, I think it is. I haven't seen... I don't think I've seen any of his films. I've still not seen Call Me By Your Name. I haven't seen the Suspiria uh, yeah, remake. The remake. That's the yeah. one I thought you were talking about at first. I was, I... I'm going to watch that because I've okay. only seen the original. So I didn't really know what to expect, but I know that a lot of people hail him as like this, you know, a, a, a incredible director. But yeah, I, I really liked it. Uh, There's a few things I didn't like, but I can imagine going up. I give it a four or five. I will say the gore and stuff didn't really bother me. Um, I actually thought it might be a little bit worse from what people are saying. However, it's probably not for everyone because there is a few scenes, like, especially like the end scene, where it does get a bit, like quite a lot. And I can imagine a lot of people wouldn't like that. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it quite as much as Tyler, um, but I think it will go up to maybe like a, a 4.5 in the future, I'll say. But yeah, really enjoyed it. And Cam, another four out of five star rating from you? Yeah, and it's, I, I so like we just talked Glass Onion, right? And I enjoyed Glass Onion so much more than this movie. I don't think I enjoyed this movie, but I do think it's very good. I, I think there's a lot of very good parts of it. This is one of those where I, you know, I, I made a video the other day of like five movies that I think are really good, but I don't necessarily love. I don't know if I'll ever rewatch this. And it's not the gore necessarily. It's just the idea that they're eating people. And it's like this. This is disgusting me. Um, um, and I don't think you love. I don't fresh. know. Get, I know. I know. <laughs> fresh man, is like not, fresh is like fresh. fresh is not I can, like, like this. I can fresh take my like mind away from it because you're they're eating like a piece of meat. And you're you know, like, it's, they're like, it's a human, but this, like, you're just, you have to cook people fresh. Right? for any cannibal yeah, listening yeah, yeah. for any cannibal <laughs> listening. Can you just munch into someone? You'll die. Right. Like you can't eat raw meat like that. It's a great question. <laughs> that I, I, that, answer to. I don't I know. Fresh, fresh made me feel a bit worse because really? like, you know, when they were, they were cooking it and like cutting it on the table and stuff like that. That kind of made me feel more uncomfortable in a way. No, I don't know what it is. Then Mark Ryland, Mark Rylance on his knees in his <laughs> like whitey tidy, whitey oh, tidies eating an old woman, man. <laughs> that dude, just Mark Rylance made me like more uncomfortable than the human dude, eating. Honestly, that scene at he the was end. So, yeah, the he was so end. fucking creepy. I love him. I I think he does a great job in everything. Yeah, he's not like the most crazy different person in anything but i think 90 percent of actors aren't um but a couple things like aside from the aside from the um eating of people i think i think it was a slow uh, a, a quite slow movie and i'm not gonna say i knock it too much but maybe if someone can agree with me i won't feel as bad considering i watched this at like 8 a 8, 8 p.m which isn't late but that's when i put uh my son to bed normally and then i just kind of lay in bed and i'll fall asleep but this time put him to bed went to a movie um and man i was i was struggling to get through it uh and i think it was just a very slow burn for maybe when i'm tired so maybe i shouldn't have done that do you, do you I, think that influenced your ranking a little bit maybe so, maybe but i'm i'm gonna say i'm gonna say i it doesn't but maybe who knows um i i but yeah like i said who knows i also don't think I don't know. I, I like coming of age movies a lot. I love the edge of 17, like super bad's a coming of age. I can't think of any others right now. Cause I'm an idiot. Um, but Ferris, I, Ferris I, Bueller's I, I love, day off. Ferris Bueller's day off is great. Moonlight. Like I really, Moonlight's so damn good. I love coming of age. Maybe not as much as Tyler. I don't think this thing like it. I, I don't know. They, I feel like care. Uh, what's her name? Russell, uh, Carrie Taylor Russell, Russell, Marin, Taylor yeah, Russell. Thank you. Marin. I don't think she was any better or worse off than at the start of the movie. Um, and we can talk about that. Maybe like, I don't, I don't think there was any change. There was obviously a lot of change in the movie. Um, uh, but like, but at the end, I kind of feel like it reverts back to where she was almost. Um, and we can talk about that more in spoilers. Those I are just strongly a few. disagree, but okay. Okay. Those are, those I, are just, I, a, we, we can, we, we'll, let's we'll talk about that. in spoilers. spoilers. Yeah. But that's, that's all I have for the non-spoiler section. Um, Please, con please continue. <laughs> uh, Yuck. Oh, also, one last thing. Every time, you guys can never go to a movie with me because every time they ate a person, I looked over to my wife and I said, nom, 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 nom. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seth and, and, and that's all I have. Good night. Um, 
Yeah, I, I also gave this a four out of five. And I'm not even going to say that maybe it'll go up on rewatch or down on rewatch because I'm never rewatching this movie. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm I, I I'm thought you, George, I thought you would like. Maybe not. I thought you'd love this. Now, listen, oh. I you guys know I love me a good coming of age movie, a good romance movie, and, and this movie did give me. You like things that make you uncomfortable. That's your thing. <laughs> yeah, right. No, yeah, you loves it, man. Not, not cat. Like I, I just, yeah. I'm just not there with body horror. Like I can watch Martyrs and I'll be fine. I could it's watch the idea. Of Bro, eating. Martyrs is worse than this. No, it's not. Cheap. See, no, I disagree. Martyrs. So, I'd, I'd rather watch Martyrs because Martyrs is so absurd. It, it's like, okay, this is not real. But then this is like, I guess so. this mm. happens in real life. Like the descent is like never happening. Yeah, but in so that, like, like Martyrs when she's like skinned. Uh, yeah, but the like, whole body. I don't know. <laughs> I, I said this after I watched Alex Garland's Men and David Cronenberg's Crimes of the Future. I just don't fuck with body no, horror. I, I hated Crimes of the Future for that yeah, reason. Yeah, especially when it's just like in your face. Like I didn't need to see Mark Rylance on his knees in tidy whites eating. Oh that was God, funny, man. <laughs> like, oh I didn't need God. to see that. It, it, I don't know. It, it, I, hated I, it, I, I hated it. I think I'm on the same boat here as Cam, where, where I absolutely respect the, the filmmaking aspect of this movie. I think it does a really good job at giving us a an endearing and heartwarming coming-of-age romance tale. Uh, but again, it, it was just adding the the cannibal aspect of it that just kind of threw me off um and i know this is based off of a book so it's not like luca guadagnino was just a psychopath who who just thought of a cannibal. you're, you're really you. good at that i love uh, your pronunciation man that's really uh, nice that really, nice. really well <laughs> yeah, I, was to I would every have time butchered you do that shit so hard man i love it uh, thank you just love it. <laughs> i got that ben wild block effect with yeah, luca guadagnino i guess yeah um, I, i'm I'm but yeah, let, let's let's get into spoilers, um, and let's start with Taylor Russell's character because uh, Cam, you kind of mentioned um, in a coming of age movie, you you expect it's coming of age. It's about watching a teenager move from from their I guess late teen years into their young adult years, uh, and, and you don't necessarily feel we got that in this movie. Um, I want to start by saying I think we did. Mm-hmm. I just don't think we got it at the time that you expected. We got her transition yeah. from a teenager to an adult within 20 minutes of the film. We're in spoilers, by the way, so please, if you haven't seen Bones and all, uh, nope. you know, drop us a like, drop us a subscribe, and just come back after you've seen the movie because I'm about to spoil one thing right away. Um, they eat people. <laughs> they eat people. Um, she came of age the second her dad left her. That is when she locked in and she became this this yeah. young adult. So I could understand that maybe throughout the entire film, okay. it, it didn't feel as uh, her character development didn't feel as in your face as you would maybe expect in a coming of age film. And mm-hmm. that's just because I think Luca Guadagnino's decision to to give us a a transition to adulthood immediately. Early on. was a very it may have thrown people off and i tyler i want to know if you echo that or if you feel differently because i know you immediately said you disagree with cam's sentiment about there wasn't really a coming of age aspect here i get where you're coming from but to me coming of age can happen at any age it's all about how you change your perspective and for me it starts off with her dad leaving her and she's desperate to find a sense of belonging because she feels like an outcast she feels like She's like, what I am and who I am as a very person means like my own father's leaving me and wants nothing to do with me. So then immediately her first mindset is need to grasp onto the next parent, need to find my mother. That's all I can think of. I'm lost. I need my mom. Drives all the way across the country to find her mom, finds Timothy Chalamet and gets solace in him. And the whole movie is her coming to terms with who she is and what she's becoming. And then she meets her mom and obviously that goes very south and different than she expected and her mom's basically like you need to die based on your beliefs and then she finally realized that at that point like obviously it's weird because it's a cannibal thing but it's like she's like okay i'm starting to cope with who i am and that's why i was interested that seth didn't like mark rylance's character because <clears throat> i feel like for me mark rylance's whole theme in this is that he's her past and he kept coming up and every time she felt comfortable with who she was felt like things were coming together with timothy chalamet mark rylance would come in reminder of who she was who her past was be like You can't escape who you are. You got to come with me. Like, let's go eat some people, which she still obviously has to do. But I feel like him just continually coming up was just her past that just was never able to escape her with her father leaving her, her mother being literally crazy. 
and everything just felt too good with Timothy Chalamet. Um, so I felt like he just kind of threw in some good wrinkles into the plot. But to me, I don't, I don't know. I just thought the coming of age story being that she just didn't have any sense of belonging at the beginning. And by the end, she was able to come to terms with who she was. And uh, because at the end of the movie, she's basically on her own at that point. And, but her, she's on her own once again, but her entire perspective on life has changed throughout that journey. Yeah. I, uh, I, I echo Tyler's thoughts on that. I think, I think the whole theme is an alienation and she's been alienated so many times, you know, from moving so many times and feeling on her own. And then, you know, she, she grows when her dad leaves and she once again is alienated and meets someone who she, who accepts her as what it is and is similar. I think that's the whole theme. With Mark Rylis' character, I don't know, man. I, I, I understand the symbolism that's there. I understand that, you know, it is the past comes towards her. I just, in this film, for me, I don't think he added anything. Maybe that is the fact that he was made me incredibly uncomfortable, which is, of course, the goal for his character. I just don't think he he, he needed to, to be there. I think we already knew what trauma she'd been through. I think we already knew when she, um, you know, visited her mom, when she saw her grandma. Like, she already knew the past that was there. I just, I just don't think it was needed to kind of bring that up continuously and trying to um make the viewer inc- uncomfortable in a way because i think we already kind of knew that if that makes sense but i think mm. i i yeah i agree i think coming of age wise i think this hit that perfectly because it was the whole change in perspective uh in isolation alienation i i, I just think yeah i think it worked really well in the coming of age aspects definitely yeah what what I'll say when I say like no different from start of the movie to the end, I, I mean like after she's left her dad, sorry. So not like I do think there is a big change from when she leaves her dad or sorry, her dad leaves her, I guess, yeah. um, to to now um, or to when she meets more Crylance's character, we'll say, because that's when um, he kind of teaches her that like there are multi- there are a lot more people out there that munch on bones, I guess. Um and so I, I see what you guys are saying. I just feel like, and here's another spoiler at the very end, Mark Rylance comes back. And um, so he's obviously a creepy motherfucker. Um, so- he, he, he comes back because she tells him he, she doesn't love him or whatever. And this dude's so fucked up in the head uh, beyond eating people. Um, he comes back and, and is going to like kill her or eat her, I believe. And then, and then Tim, Timmy comes in they fight him, they kill him, but in the process, Timmy gets stabbed. Timmy's dying, and Timmy tells her to eat him. Um, it's so. So weird. I think, yeah. So I think the assumption is he, she eats him like bones and all, uh, like the plot says. Because earlier in the movie, they uh, meet yes, that guy with right. other weirdos who eat yeah. people bones and all, which not possible. I'm gonna it's say it right. Literally now. impossible. It li- quite literally. Impossible. I still don't know uh, if they were talking literally anytime they talked about that anyway. So I still think it fine. might be more. It doesn't thematic. matter. Maybe maybe she just ate him and then got rid of the bones or whatever because she does clean it all up. And at that point, I'm kind of like, yeah, she's she's grown in who she is, and maybe she's ex- and maybe the solution is she's accepted that she's. Um, That's um, my. Yeah, know. she's accepted that she's a cannibal and she's just going to be this cannibal for the rest of her life. But I didn't really get that. And I also didn't get that that um, she wasn't a cannibal anymore. I kind of wanted them to go one way or the other. She's either grown and not become a cannibal anymore or she's grown and she is fully in cannibal mode. And maybe and maybe that's the the big resolution. And I didn't necessarily get it, whatever. Um, that's just kind of where I was at. But I, I yeah, I, I, I think she was on her own after her dad left her. Um, and she's on her own at the very end. Um, I, I, I don't think, oh, I don't think you're wrong. I think it's just another mm-hmm. one of those films where you can make assumptions yeah. on the ending. Same as like after Sun. I don't think anyone's necessarily right or wrong, but I, I can definitely see why you would anticipate, you know, why, why you would think that. I just yeah. think definitely bad. I think the ending is so open mind you don't know where she's going to end up you don't know if it'll go back to square one again you don't know if because of her experiences during the film that she's kind of learned to accept that and she goes on her own and becomes her own person and, and grows with that but again i don't think anyone's kind of right or wrong with this because it is so uh down to you down to your interpretation as to where she goes after after that happens at the end but yeah yeah that that whole la- I, I would have been so cool if the film ended like where they had panned to like a car and she was basically giving like a little monologue like right before the mark final mark violence scene i would too if the movie had if the movie had ended there this might have been a four and a half out of five stars but that final scene just left like such a bad taste in my mouth because like at one end like you're kind of watching i don't think it was needed yeah it's not even that yeah it one uh, listen again it's based off of a book so obviously Mm -hmm. it's there it's going to be in the movie but like in 
one side of my brain, I'm like, am I about to watch Mark Rylance RAP this girl? Am I about to watch him kill this girl, eat this girl? Like, I don't know what's about to happen. And Mark Rylance in this movie just, this is such a weird role for him to have picked up. I think I would have much rather liked a no-name actor step into this role because the entire time I watched this movie, I'm like, it's just Mark Rylance and it's just gross because like I've always seen Mark Rylance as like this, you know, cute little old man. Oh, you know, God. he's yeah. the butler in, uh, or no, he's uh, whatever the cute old tech guy in Ready Player One and shit. Uh, so like he's this was Mark such, Zuckerberg and Don't Look Up. Yeah, like this was just such an uncomfortable role for me to see him in. Yeah, and did then well. in no way did did I. And listen, I'm no cannibal, but I just I didn't see timmy asking taylor russell to eat him as like an expression of love at all i thought that was just like a. it felt like something that was supposed to be like a, oh that's cute you know it's like a you know rite of passage blah 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 i was like this is gross like you're literally eating someone you love one of the first rules of the movie was never eat an eater i don't know the whole final scene left a bad taste in my mouth and then i honestly didn't think timmy even died based on that final shot until was, I, she was munching him i thought maybe big he time so the, what the fuck was that last shot i thought he like somehow survived no it. that was that was earlier in the movie it just earlier. came back to that moment where they were together and they were in love uh, yeah. yeah that but yeah that was like when they they were i forget where they were um but they were in this like pasture like Nebraska and they were sitting together yeah and they were in love okay. um and so it just went back to that as like this is a nice moment in their life kind of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. The I, whole final sequence was just that. It felt very out of place. Yeah, it was interesting though because I, I, I mean, I know Seth and I are in the minority here. It sounds like in terms of not being as bothered by the gore, but I feel like this is a movie that if you're going into expecting like a cannibalistic gore fest, and again, I think Cam and George probably disagree, but I think you might be like disappointed thinking like you wanted more because it is heavy on the romance drama side. Whereas if you're going into this for like a coming of age drama romance, you're going to be disappointed at the amount of cannibalism in it. So I think the amount of cannibalism is kind of like a weird amount. It's just kind of like half there to where like if you don't want any of it, it's way too much for you. If you want it like Terrifier 2 level, not going to be enough for you. Um, But yeah, shout out. Yeah, go ahead. It's just one thing. I just before you could because to that point. I, this is not like a coming of age tale that you can half ass. Like they had to fully embrace mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like the cannibal aspect of it, which I think they did. Cause I think if they had dialed that down a little bit too much, it would have just come off very, you know, corny and, and cheesy. It would have felt like a weird coming of age movie where they just like slipped cannibalism into there just for the sake of it. But they really embrace. And that's one aspect of this film that I truly respect is that, Luca Guadagnino was like, yo, we're going balls to the wall here. Like, this is Mm going to make people uncomfortable. This is going to make people stop eating their food in our theater. But we really need to just embrace it. Like, we can't tell this story in half ass. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I I agree with you, George, saying that, like, I wouldn't have minded if it ended 15 minutes earlier when they had that pasture. But then I mentioned that to my girlfriend as we were leaving. And she was like, because she was like, she wasn't bothered by the cannibal stuff. But she was kind of like, she basically said, I wouldn't want them to end on a note where it's like these two cannibals are happily living happily ever after. She liked that it ended with not happiness because these people don't deserve a happy life. So that part, I do agree that it it resolved in a way that thematically I kind of can digest a little better and no pun intended, but um, they they, shout out Michigan twice on this podcast. They end up in Ann Arbor. She's a, she's a go blue. (laughs) Is she a, not a professor, but she's, she's like a, a li- She works at a library. I right. Thought. But since they're, she said a library and is out of school and is in Ann Arbor, I just assumed the University of Michigan. So big, big yeah. week for the University of Michigan, getting to be featured in Bones of All as well as going to the college football playoff. Co- couple like small points. <clears throat> yeah. Shout out Midwest. Indiana was featured. We have we have cannibals. Shout out <laughs> us. Um, are, are you one of them? Yeah. Yeah, honestly. Nice. Um but one thing I and and let me know about what you guys think. I didn't like that. Like I didn't like the lore of this that they made it so like cannibals can smell other cannibals like from miles away. Mark Rylance could smell her from a mile away. Yeah. That and also they kind of made like cannibalism like hereditary with with her mom and then uh, Timothy Chalamet's dad mm-hmm. um, was it was a cannibal and 
it was just kind of weird. The, it's not those aren't things that like I take a lot of points off of a movie for. I'm just like ah, I don't really like this. Like it's. it's just I also an feel like part of the door. that this has to. This was my first question. Me, me and Victoria were questioning the exact same thing when we walked out of the theater. Like, how much of this is like real? Like, like obviously I don't. I'm not well versed in the cannibal community, but like <laughs> one, like is it hereditary? Two, are their noses actually that powerful? Like. I, I, George, I don't think there are this many cannibals in the in the open cannibals in the yeah. world, man. See, normally we're not going to get, no, 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 no. get messages like no. Victoria, <laughs> Victoria said the same thing. She was like, "Does this actually happen no. at this?" And my no. first thing was, "Yes." Like as people, a, as a Midwestern, no. <laughs> also, people, listen, people are fucked. I'm just saying. That's all. If you're a cannibal, are, you are, do you, but you're. Are. You, you do you <laughs> do not do you <laughs> stop doing you actually I, I didn't have a problem with the whole strong scent thing but it does make things very very difficult because the fact that those creepy ass dudes by the creek you couldn't even lie to them and be like hey man like we're just doing our own thing on a date night because they knew immediately like no we yeah. know you're one of us being the smell so that that freaking sucks for them me, because you just can't ever them toes yeah, uh, i think there's more eat, to that I think did they want to eat them. taylor and timmy i don't, I don't know, know but i think they were definitely not it's gonna so do weird. good things like i don't know what they're yeah. trying to do they're gonna kill them kidnap them do okay. worse things yeah. than that but it definitely didn't seem like things were gonna end well if they stayed yeah there. that's yeah. that's what i figured i think they were just creepy and it's it's it made every other cannibal look creepy except timmy and and uh and marin what god i keep forgetting her new year name taylor right taylor. where is marin coming taylor from <laughs> i thought it was erin T- no it's marin uh, i think it's marin. Uh, don't they call her like mayor but I mean, they, they yeah. call her a couple of things in the movie. Yeah, she has, she has multiple names. Um, all right, any any final thoughts on Bones and all before we move on? Cam, oh, I, I, me- I mentioned this. I mentioned this prior to the to the um, pod, and I said I'd mention it during just when it starts. And she she so she's a high schooler, obviously that moved to this town, um, and then she goes there for a for a, a sleepover. She sneaks sleepover. out of her house, goes goes to a friend's house for a sleepover. Leaves the um, window and then, open. Yeah, and then she's under she's under like a table with a girl, and I almost thought they were gonna have them kiss. Or something. I did. Like I she's did. looking that's at her, like she's in love. No, then like you she's realize look- she's smelling her. Yeah, that's yeah, what you. Yeah, exactly. And then like she she gets new uh, new nail polish, and she shows Marin the new nail polish, and then Marin just bites her finger off, basically. And I'm like. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, what the what the fuck is going on?" Uh, yeah, that was but that, yeah, that's when the movie just kind of starts rolling. And her, <laughs> oh, another point I really did not like a whole lot. This movie had a ton of exposition through her dad's audio recording, um, like explaining yeah. her childhood basically. And I'm like, this doesn't sound like a real thing that a person would say. It just sounds like exposition to get you through the movie, um, but. Again, that's just something I didn't like. Also, it's not, it's not a huge deal. But just one thing about those tapes, like he is in those tapes, he's obviously admitting to a ton of crimes, and he is just relying on, on his her daughter yeah. breaking. Like that's a you got a lot of trust in someone that you just left. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much he cared about his life at that point, though, knowing yeah, that his no. da- his wife w- went crazy and and that his daughter's also that yeah. way. I I kind of yeah. took it as he's just like. You're on your own. I'm gonna go just drink liquor until I die. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. We'll uh we'll wrap our bones and all um review there. Uh if you saw bones and all, if you're following this uh this podcast episode on, on uh YouTube, let us know what you thought of this movie. Uh once again, Tyler, five out of five, myself, Seth, and Cam, all four out of fives with Maybe one out of hundred. Don't rope me into your shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Cam very specifically asked me to say that he uh, abides by five out of five star supremacy. 